Have you ever thought that with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we can create a web application to forecast the weather in a simple way, with global data sources updated in real time? This will be an interesting project for those of you who want to get familiar with the API when searching for a place. The application will provide a lot of important information related to the weather, such as temperature, air diaper tissue, pictures depicting the weather, wind power, humidity, and pressure. In case you search somewhere that doesn't exist, the screen will vibrate to warn you that no results can be found. And if you find it interesting and want to see more interesting videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to follow upcoming videos. First, I need to create HTML files to work, CSS files to design the interface and JavaScript files to handle user operations and call the weather API. Embed the CSS file in the head of the HTML to prioritize loading the interface, while the JavaScript file loads last so the DOM elements are ready first. All content will be written inside main. The first content of a weather forecast application is the form. This is where users can enter content and search for the place they want to check the weather. And of course, it will include a text input to enter data and a button to click to search. I want to replace this search word with a more UI UX friendly icon. So first search for font awesome CDN. Visit this page, copy the latest version and paste it into the head section. This is a library providing free icons that are very popular today. Once completed, visit the Fontosum homepage. Search for the icon you want. Click on the results found. Copy this line of code and paste it into our HTML file. So we have a search icon. Not doing the other parts yet. I switch to the CSS tab to edit the form first. The body will have margin zero, min height 100% height of the device. Use display flex to move the main element position. Justify content center moves to the middle horizontally. Align item center to move to the center vertically. Use linear gradient to create a gradient of effect. And finally, the font used for the entire page is sans serif. The asterisk mark represents all elements in the website. They will all have padding 0 and margin 0 declared. With main, width 300 pixels. Height max content, min height 300 pixel. Background color white, border radius 30 pixel. Creates a shadow with a blur value of 50 pixels. Padding 30 pixel. Box sizing border box to fix the initial width. With forms, I create an enclosing border. Use display flex to align child element positions. Justify content space between to push the content inside to both sides. Both input text and button remove borders. Delete the background and delete the outline. Instead, add 10 pixel padding. In the form, I rounded the four corners to 30 pixels. The eye element is the font awesome icon. The opacity is reduced to make it less prominent. So, I have finished designing the form for the application. Next, we come to creating the returned weather results. I will wrap it with a resulting section class. For image elements, I don't use divs. Using the figure tag instead is an advice for everyone. For example, I have a figure that contains information about where to return results. Then it will have a London fig caption tag and an image of that country's flag, similar to temperature. I also have an image that represents the weather. and a fit caption to display temperature information. I specifically put 31 in a span tag so that when using JavaScript, we can easily change it. A P tag contains a description. And of course, this description is also provided by the API. Now, I create a list of additional information. First, the wind power is 98%. Humidity is 55%. The final pressure is 1001 HPA. To make these lists look more interesting, I will return to the Font Awesome homepage to find more related icons, then copy it and paste it into the corresponding information section.
This is the entire content of the HTML. Now we will go through CSS to redesign it. The result class will have top padding of 20 pixels to create distance from the form. Text align center to center the content with the name part. Highlight it with bold text, big size, with display flex, and the combination of justify content center. Align item center so that the text and map image are aligned with each other. The distance between them is 20 pixels. With images representing the weather, fix width 150 pixels. Use drop shadow to create a black shadow effect behind the photo, making our photo stand out more. Finally, the temperature information will have font size 3 EM. The class section will have padding of top 10 pixels, padding bottom 30 pixels. Now we come to the UL element, where light tags contain additional information. List style none to remove dots in front of the list. Use display grid to divide columns. And of course, I will divide it into three equal columns. The distance between each column is 10 pixels. Coming to each lead card, I gave the background orange color, white letters, round the four corners by 10 pixels, padding 20 pixels and 10 pixels. Use a little trick with linear gradients. With color range from transparent to black with opacity 0.3, we'll make the bottom half of the element darker. Finally, emphasize the content with weight bold font, font size small, with the icon located inside each item. Enlarge it to two times the text size. Display block so that it is in a separate row. To avoid conflicts with the icon library's CSS, add important to game priority. Margin top and bottom are 20 pixels. That's it. Now I'm adding color to the second and third item tags to make them stand out more. So we have completed the CSS design step. Now comes the most important step in this video. Now so we can manipulate any element on the screen using JavaScript. Then we need to identify it first. For example, now I want to get the content the user entered in the input. Then I declare its ID as value search. In JavaScript, I call it back using the get element by ID function. Okay? Likewise, I need to manipulate the location content that is returning the results. Then I also assign it the ID city. In JavaScript side, call that element thanks to get element by ID. Just keep going like that. I identify the elements that need to be manipulated in HTML, then call them back through JavaScript. This is just one way. In addition, people may not need to declare ID if the element has a class. For example, with the tax model class. Then in JavaScript, we can also call it back through the query selector. I'll keep recalling the elements I need to manipulate. Once prepared, we proceed to the event handling step when the user operates. When the user clicks on the search button or presses enter, then we can listen to that event through submit. I will try creating a notification to check if it works. It has been received, but notice, every time I press enter, their website has had a refresh phenomenon. To prevent that, please add prevent default to the submit function. Next, I check to see if the user has entered the required data. If already entered. At this point, I proceed with further processing by calling an API function called searchWeather. Here I have two variables containing two extremely important values. The URL will contain the weather API link. ID is the app ID value to use the API. I'll paste it in the last part of the path. Now, to be able to call the API, I use the function fact with the path as the URL variable. Once the response from the request is received, it is converted to JSON. And finally, data is the data returned. I'll console log its value so we can check. This is the result it returns. Everyone will see the code here has a value of 400. That means it can't look up the results. That's because we haven't sent the data the user just entered to the API. 
So to send it, at the URL, I add Q equal to what the user just entered. Let's try again. And this is the data we receive. A lot of information related to the weather at the location we just searched. After obtaining the data, our job now is to put this data on the website. To know if the API can find the place we just click search, it is thanks to the value of the code. If the value of the code variable is 200, it means it has been found. If it is different from 200, it means it cannot be found. That means that only when the code is 200, we just inserted data into the website. First, I want to get the name of the place I just found. Is it in the variable name, right? The value of the year on the screen is placed in the fig caption tag of the ID city. So from city, find the fig caption tag, change its text to the name value returned by the API. Next is the flag image. I copied the flag's path here and called it back here. Pay attention to this character. This is the abbreviation for each country. Just replace it with the corresponding character and the flag will be passed. In API data, it is in sys, and its value is in the country variable. So I'll replace it here instead of the GB character. Next is the temperature information. We have an image located in the temperature ID. Then first I will copy its path and call it back in JavaScript. The special thing about this image is that it has a special character tend in the path. This is a special character provided by the API. With each different character, a different image will be returned representing each type of weather. So in the API, where will we get this character? First open weather, open the array at position zero. Inside it will be the icon value. Okay, so according to this value, I pasted it here instead of the default character. As for the current temperature information, it is in the fig caption tag of the temperature ID. Its value is stored in main with the variable name temperature. Similarly, short description of current weather in API data is placed in weather, position zero. And description key. Next is the information cloud. It is set in array cloud with key is alls. Humidity information will be placed in main. And that information pressure is also reinforced. So we have finished inserting the found data into the HTML. We will now resolve the remaining issues. First, after the user has searched for information, whether success or failure, I will clear the content in the input so users can find new content. In case the API cannot find a place corresponding to the value we are looking for, I need to report an error on the screen. So if the code is different from 200, it means an error. At this time, I call the main element of the HTML and add to it an error class to create the error effect. Regarding its effects, it will be written in CSS. When the main tag is assigned a class named error, at this point the main will run an animation called error effect within 0.3 seconds and only runs once. Specifically, this animation simply creates many movements that change position continuously in a short time, and these values are all random. So let's try entering a place that doesn't exist so we'll report an error and run the animation. As you can see, the main has run the shaking animation, but it only runs once. Subsequent imports no longer work because the error class has been assigned to the main before. And the animation is also specified to only run once. To refresh it. So use set timeout so that after one second, main will clear the class error again. So that if the next search encounters an error, it will proceed to add a new error class. Remember that the animation will also play again. Finally, the processing. What will the website screen display when the user has just accessed it without searching for anything? Because the default data in HTML is just hard code. There are two options that you can handle. 
One is to display a blank screen that only displays the form for users to search. And two will be the way I will do it now. That is when the user has just accessed the website. I run an app in it function. In this function, I search and display the weather forecast at the place where I live as default. So when I enter the website, the user has already seen the weather forecast displayed in a given area. If you follow the video to this step and everything is fine, then you have completed this project very well. But if you encounter an error of not being able to get the API, then continue watching the next video to fix it. Please. It's very possible that you can't get the API because the app ID at the time you watched the video was no longer usable. So create your own new ID in just two minutes. First, you need to visit the Weather API homepage. Click Register to create an account. Please fill in all information here. Don't worry, everything is completely free. After creating, please click on my API. You will see that you are given the same key value here. Please copy it and paste it into your project instead of the key I provided before. Because these are newly created keys, it will usually take 10 minutes to an hour for them to become active. So now you just need to wait. So that's the whole content of this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment to share with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to update the next new videos. Thank you everyone. See you in the next video.